This video is brought to you by Squarespace. The DF line of grinders has become more or less a disruptor in the home coffee space, and the new DF64V is once again putting the market giants on notice, with features like adjustable RPM, a brushless motor, and coated burrs, which are often reserved for those willing to drop four figures on a coffee grinder. And the big headline is, they're doing all of that for $600. But it's not without its potential issues. Now, the big question is, can its possible benefits, i.e. savings, outweigh its potential issues? Well, that's what we'll be looking into today, on top of taking a closer look at its features, performance both inside and outside of the cup, its downsides, and of course, a quick and dirty comparison of the eerily similar Lagone P64. And of course, as always in the spirit of full disclosure, me Coffee sent me this grinder for my review without any expectation or participation in the content of this video. And all they asked is I link to them down below, so you can take a look at the grinder if you're interested in maybe looking into it further or picking one up for yourself after you watch the video. But with all that out of the way, let's dive into it. Unlike many previous DF models, the 64V carries some features that are firsts or considerable upgrades from earlier iterations. But the main one, and where the V in the name comes from, is the variable speed adjustment. And this is controlled via a stepped 12 setting knob on the side of the grinder. The knob itself has a small screen that reads the current RPM speed, and it ranges from 600 to 1800. Moving to the inside, the power plant is a whisper quiet 300 watt brushless DC motor. And that motor is attached to a pair of 64 millimeter flat burrs with a DLC or diamond light carbon coating. This coating gives the burrs a sleek sort of gray-black look, but beyond its aesthetics, it increases the hardness while also reducing friction and static. Also, in an effort to minimize retention and maximize cleanliness, the dosing chute is removable and comes off in two parts that are connected via magnets, which also carries through to the anti-popcorning lid. But from here, many of the features have become more or less standard on most DF models. Things like a stepless grind adjustment, a dosing cup, but this one is made of metal, and of course, a little silicone hat for those who partake in the puff puff. Now that we've taken a look at all the 64V's features, let's take a closer look at how they all perform outside of the vacuum of a spec list, and there's no better place to start than with how it grinds. The 64V is my first experience with DLC coating, and overall, I've been pretty happy with the results. From batch one, the grinds themselves were fluffy when it comes to espresso, and nicely uniform when it comes to filter. Also, the 64V does perform as advertised when it comes to retained grinds, with an average of 0.1 grams across all grind sizes. Of course, the bellows can assist, but it tends to mostly just kick out dusty ultrafines. Personally, I find that RDT is the better of the two options, and helps with reducing static cling, particularly in the chute where it tends to build up over time. And I have to say, as someone who rides just a very fine line near compulsive when it comes to the cleanliness of my gear, I do admire the ease of getting into the burr chamber for cleaning without any tools. But now that we know how it grinds, let's start talking about what happens when those grinds mute water. And when it comes to my brewing experience on previous models of the DF, I have to say they ride a pretty flat line. They're good, but not great. But the 64V definitely makes a significant jump in cup quality. Of course, this increase comes down to a few different variables. For one, the burrs, their speed, and finally, personal preferences. Now, I'll go out on a limb and say I do think these are the best burrs I've had stock on a DF grinder. Now, they don't have a particularly unique geometry, but when you add the ability to control burr speed, this opens up a variable that can have a big impact on grind consistency, brewing dynamics, and cup qualities. Now this is when the aforementioned personal preferences begin to kick in, because what I've found in my experience is that slower speeds create less fines and faster speeds create more. This is why the same dose on the same grind setting at 600 and 1800 RPM produce wildly different shots. Now if you want a deeper analysis on that topic, I did do a video with a bunch of different tests and gave my two cents on that whole topic, and I'll link to that up here or down here. But long story short is a slower RPM creates less fines, and what that does is creates more clarity in the cup, while faster RPMs produce more fines creating more complexity and just general balance. For instance, I generally want a nice middle ground between clarity, complexity, and texture when it comes to my espresso. So I found that 1100 was my preferred speed setting when pulling shots. The espressos themselves were full and balanced, but still carried through those subtle bright and fruity notes that I often aim for. 
But on the flip side, when it comes to filter coffee, I want clarity above all else. So when it comes to brewing on those, I would often grind on the lowest setting, which is 600, and that gave me bright cups with intense clarity and nuance. All right, so now that we're freshly coming off the heels of talking about the benefits of RPM control, let's now talk about the downsides. And I'm just gonna give it to you straight. It jams easily. When grinding at 1000 RPM or under, you'll need to always use a hot start, i.e. with the burrs already spinning, and dose your coffee in slowly. If you don't do both, there is a decent likelihood it'll jam. Even at 1100 all the way up to about 1400, I have had some stuttering on lighter roasts, especially when grinding finer. Also, even though the motor is actually very quiet on its own, when you're grinding coffee on finer settings with the stock burrs, it does make this very loud screeching sound that I find to be pretty jarring. Last but not least, the choice to not give it forks for your portafilter or your dosing cup is a bit of a head scratcher. I can't say that I love having to move and keep track of this extra dosing cup platform. It's just a really odd design decision, and I'm not really sure where it comes from, especially considering how on top of community requests the DF grinders are. I mean, is this something people had asked for? I have no idea. For those who are familiar with the Legome P64, which I am and you probably are, it's pretty hard to not compare it to the DF64V. I mean, just take a quick glance and you'll see why. But their similarities go far beyond what's on the surface. So let's just do a quick side-by-side -side to really drive that point home. They both use 64mm flat burrs. Both are single dosers. Both have stepless adjustments. Both claim very low retention. Both have variable speed control. Both have 300 watt brushless DC motors, and both have machine encoded aluminum bodies. But I think the big question is, at least one on most people's minds, is why is the P64 $1,800 and the 64V 600 when their spec sheets look like carbon copies? Now, as a regular user of the P64 and it being my daily grinder, there are a few main points that really stand out to me, but none of them are associated with the quality of coffee each grinder is capable of. When equipped with the same burrs, on the same RPM, and the same coffee, both grinders produce near-identical grinds, which, as you'd expect, leads to near-identical cups of coffee. Instead, the difference to me seems much more subtle and kind of nebulous. The general fit, finish, feel, and motor performance of the P64 leads me to believe it's been designed and engineered to be a more robust piece of coffee gear. And to that point, in my just over a year of ownership on the P64, the motor has never stalled. Hot start or cold start, even at its lowest setting, which is 300 RPM, it powers through even the lightest roasts. So overall, I don't have a whole lot of complaints about the P64. And I think the 64V is also a viable option, considering its price difference and the P64's somewhat spotty availability. And arguably where it seems to matter most, in the cup, the differences are minimal, if not indistinguishable. So in the end, as I sat down to think about the DF64V and my final thoughts, I do feel like it does check a lot of the right boxes. Many of its new features show a clear connection and understanding of not only what many coffee enthusiasts want, but also where their previous grinders may have fallen short. And this is something that I feel is rarely seen from any company coffee gear or otherwise. But of course, its merits also come with some concerns, and for me those are all around the motor and the ease at which it stalls. And this isn't something that's completely unheard of, and it's an issue that's plagued many grinders with RPM control, so without more long-term data it's hard to say whether it's anything more than just an annoyance. And when measured up against the quality of the coffee you can brew and its price tag, it just may be worth the slow dosing and occasional jam. But that's a question that only you can answer. So as I wrap this one up, let me know your thoughts. What do you think of the DF line of grinders and what do you think about variable speed grinding? Do you think it's an option that's worth putting on grinders considering its potential issues and the common issues that's been happening with RPM grinders just overall? Drop your answers to those questions and any others you may have in the comment section down below. But remember, if your question is where you can build a beautiful and functional website, Squarespace is the answer. Using their powerful platform, you can build a community and connect with your audience through gated members-only content, leverage insights, use their powerful blogging tools, or generate revenue through a storefront. 
Squarespace also has extensions to help you manage your inventory, promote products, share directly to social platforms, and even streamline bookkeeping. So go to squarespace.com for your free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Prometheus to save 10% off your first purchase of a domain or website. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell button for notifications of new videos posted every Friday. Check out my Instagram at Spermetheus for content throughout the week, my blog at Spermetheus.com, and as always, stay caffeinated. Pony boy.